Welcome back to the latest edition of Treaty Talk. Myself, Jack Neville, and Matt Callan of the Weekly Observer and Veil vale Star. Matt, you can't hide your smile there as we look forward to another All Ireland final, uh, second in three years. Incredible stuff from John Kiley's side. They overcame Galway last weekend, 27 points, 24 in Crow Park. Um, probably the hardest game to date, and it'll set up a final against Waterford, who was the hardest game to date when they played in the Munster final. Um, that obviously we have another week for that game. We look forward to the, the Limerick and Waterford game in great detail next week. But uh, for this weekend, we'll focus on the merits of the win over Galway and and, and what that what that brought, and that is an All Ireland final place. And we'll we we'll go through it quarter by quarter, Matt, because it was re- it was a real absorbing game. And I suppose when you look at the first quarter and probably the first ten minutes, Galway race into a three point lead. Uh, Tom Morrissey comes back with a double. But Galway are 7-2 up and you're thinking it's another semi-final collapse, for want of a better word, from Limerick. But, uh, they dug their heels and in going in at 7-4 at the first quarter, there were signs that Limerick were there, but we knew we were in for a game straight away. Yeah, I suppose looking at it overall, Jack, and, and, and the test we got from Galway, it, it, it was probably the ideal test for going into an All-Ireland final. And it was nothing more than we, than, than we expected from, from Galway because um, Galway are a decent team um, and we, we spoke about it here last week. Like, um, they, 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 they contrived somehow to lose the next the final rather than take any win it, I, I would say. And, and um, the manner in which they had bounced back and, and beaten the All-Ireland champions, like they um, like Tipperary, you know, that all right when they played Limerick in the second round, they, they, they still had the safety net of, of the back door. But here are the All Ireland champions. That evening in Limerick, they, they, they put their title on, on the line. And, and I was hugely impressed with the way that Galway um, um, overcame Tipperary. And I was particularly impressed with the manner in which they saw out the game. Late, late, late in the game. So I, I wasn't at all surprised with the with them, the level of the challenge that that, that Galway provided. And you're right. Yes, they got off to a, a very, very good start. But sure, like you know, and it, it's been part of the narrative all the week about um, when have we seen a player step up to four line balls in an All Ireland semi final and put four of all of the bar, like. Um, Galway got the best possible start when Joe stepped up to the first line ball and 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 put it over the bar. It was an ideal uh, ideal start. He tacked on a couple of frees, and <clears throat> certainly in, in in the first up to the first water break, seventeen minutes or whatever it was, you'd have to say that it was Galway that kicked kicked most of the boxes. But you're absolutely right in your analysis there and your opening point. There were signs immediately before the water break that Limerick were getting into the game, that they were finding their rhythm because um, the two last scores, it, 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 you must remember it was seven points to two. Had it gone into the water break at seven points to two, um, it would have been a greater challenge for Limerick. And I'm not saying that they, would, they wouldn't have risen to it, but they got a bit of momentum before, after, uh, before the first water break. I mean, I think it was um, good old Hegarty and Seamus Flanagan sent over successive points. So suddenly, from being five points down, you were back to within a puck of a ball. So there was something really clean to at the first quarter break and something to build on going, in, going into what is now termed the second quarter. Yeah, and it's certainly, it's certainly a game of four quarters. And Limerick, once again, after the water break, really burst into life and... And there was no there was no tactic board in Crow Park like we saw in the Munster final. It was just in quick word. And Limerick were a different team in that final, we'll say, 20 minutes of the first half. Outscoring Galway 11-4, taking a 15-13 lead into the water break. And if it wasn't for Joe Cannon's sidelines, it could have been a lot more. But there was a huge difference between the first and second quarters from Limerick. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And the one worry you would have going in at the water break was right we have a bit of momentum at last in the game. We have a bit of a foothold in the game. Is the water break going to, going, going to disrupt that? But thankfully, it didn't simply really, really drove on in, 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 in the second quarter. And the, the outscored Galway was at 11 points to six. 11-4. Um, 
And 11-4. Oh, no, 11-6, you're right. 11-6, you're right. 11-6. 11-6 in, 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 in the second quarter and and um, to take a two-point lead in at halftime. But that was the period in which Limerick were probably at their best in, in the game. Now, uh, what you did, they, they probably had a, a sniff of a goal chance in, in the first quarter early, early on, but um, it, it was missed. Um, but... Um, Certainly, in 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 the second quarter, it it was it, it, it probably was Limerick's. Well, it's hard to say it was their best period because they finished strongly when the, when the chips were really down, and um, um, like eleven points in 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 fifteen minutes or sixteen minutes is fantastic scoring, Jack, and it it, it will tell you um the the, the potential and. And, and the power of the of, of the Limerick attack when, when they turn it on and when they find the rhythm. And I suppose we, we spoke before the game, and John Kelly spoke about before the game about having the extra week to um to recover after after, after the monster final. Um, I suppose it might in a way excuse why Galway hit the ground running with such haste that they had just come off uh, off that victory with, with Tipperary and they were they were buoyed up by it. And um, Limerick took a bit, bit, bit of time, bit of time to settle. But um, overall, the, 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 at that second quarter was absolutely critical because um, you know the doubts and um, doubts of our capacity to get through semi-finals, um, which had dogged us for so long in Croke Park, were beginning to raise their ugly head. Um, certainly in, in, in the first quarter, but it was a fantastic second quarter by Limerick. Jack. Yeah, and, and, and building, building on that fantastic second quarter, Limerick's third quarter was, was equally impressive. Uh, they, were, they led 21-16 um, at that second water break, we'll say. But it could have been a lot more. Um, Seamus Flanagan had a chance for goal that was saved. Kyle came in afterwards and saved. And it was, it was actually two brilliant saves from the goalie who actually, he had a, he had a hit and miss day, to be honest. Some of his um, hookouts went astray, but uh, there was bad touch as well from the Galway players, so I wouldn't blame him. But Limerick led by five with about 15, 20 minutes to go. And it could have been a lot more, but in the end, it was a lot closer game we talked. But again, in that third quarter, Limerick really showed what they were all about. They did. They, did, they, 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 they carried over the pre halftime form in, 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 into, that, into that third quarter. And like, um, you're right when you say that, that, that um, the lead could have been, uh, could have been more. Um, how much more? It could have been eight, nine, possibly ten points. Um, had the goal gone in, of course, it would have it, it would have changed the entire dynamic. Um, but like um, you know, it, it, they were very, very comfortable at twenty-one sixteen. Not just on the scoreboard, but in the actual play, they 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 they, they, they were very, very comfortable. So. Um, like it all got very well going in, going into the home straight, and and um, like you know they had confined Galway in that sixteen or seventeen minutes to just three scores, which you know um, it gives you an idea of of of, of the, the the supremacy of the mastery that Limerick they outscored Galway in, in that period uh, six points to three, and um, like they were really really full value for it. And um, like I, I don't remember in the three quarters we have discussed today that Nicky Quaid um be being really tested at any at any at any stage. Yeah, and I suppose no. just, just as we are on Nicky Quaid, um it, it you know it, it's sometimes lost um the value and, and the quality of, of his puck out. And I suppose above all, and you you said that about Ina Murphy. And who was reputed to have a good a good put out as well, and and um, Nicky Quaid is so consistent, absolutely, you know the epitome of consistency when it comes to that. Yeah, no, and we'll we'll get on to Nicky um, after we we finish off with the final quarter, and and to be honest, the first three quarters probably didn't really live up to the expectation, but the final quarter was all action. Um, you obviously had that, that late surge from Galway. Joe Kenning going off nearly vitalised the team. If you can imagine, Joe's impact was huge while he was on the field. But I suppose the Galway players kind of wanted to do it for Joe. They, they levelled it. 
um, at, I think it was 25 apiece in the 75th, or 24 apiece in the 75th minute. But then you had Tom Morrissey, who started the game with a brace of points, finishes with a brace of points to pull Limerick over the line. And as you said at the start, it was probably the real test that Limerick wanted after destroying Tip and Clare in the first two rounds. Tough games against Waterford and Galway bode well, and certainly they were put to defend their Connors by Galway, especially in that final quarter. They, they, they certainly were, they certainly were, and, and, and Joe, uh, Joe Kenny, who in the box, seemed, seemed to get, seemed to galvanise in Galway, and, and um, Evan Nylak came on for him, and, and, and the first thing he did actually in the in, in the 69th minute, um, Galway were trailing two by two points at the time, um, was to land an absolute monstrous free. Um, with, 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 with his first touch, and and then kind of wheel and um, and the, the omens at that point, Jack, were not good for Limerick. But Dermot Burns, and I have seen very little about it during the week, stepped up a crucial free, a very 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 difficult free out on the left, and nailed it. It was an absolutely in the context of the game, Jack. That was one of the most crucial scores of the game. Um, like Dermot had held his nerve and stepped up to, to that free. Like um, there was a long, long the, the, the post and crop part were very, very far away from him when he when he stepped up to it. Absolutely nailed it. Now Young Nyland for Galway, he, he, he leveled it quickly again and then in stepped Tom Morrissey. Like Tom got three of that Limerick's last four. Um, points. Adrian Green got the other, um, and Thomas last play was the uh, last point was known to be. But Tom got two excellent, two excellent scores from play in in, in the seventy six and seventy eight minutes. Now we're saying seventy six and seventy eight because of the prolonged um, uh, delay there was for the unfortunate injury to Joe Kenny. Uh, but there was nine minutes of extra time. But like it showed that the, the character of Limerick and the children particularly the character of Tom Morrissey. And Declan Hannon has men mentioned it at the week about different lads um, stepping stepping up in, in, in training and in big matches. And here was Tom Morrissey stepping up, providing the leadership. Now we are not entirely unaccustomed to Tom Morrissey doing things like that. We saw what he did against Kilkenny um, as you were right to say up there um, two years ago when the fat was in the fire really and, and the game in the melting pot and told us and, and, and the weight of history against us and that we hadn't beaten Kilkenny for 45 years to the championship and Tom again stepped up to the plate just as he stepped up to the plate that Sunday. Yeah and and I suppose with, with the game kind of to review there done in recap um, on Tom Morrissey obviously he finished with 6-5 from play an unbelievable performance but Garrod Hegarty's performance kind of goes under the radar then he finished with 4 points from play and it's kind of becoming a standard for Garrod to, to, to clip in with that. I mean, Keane Lynch then at 11 uh, got two points in the second half when, when Limerick really hit their purple patch. But yeah, the, impo that... the, Im the importance of that half forward line really comes, comes into focus when you look at um, Aaron Galan was kept relatively quiet when he finished with a point from play. Shams Galan got, got two from play and amazingly Graham McCahey was kept scoreless. Now Peter Casey came on and made a huge difference and we'll talk about it again. But it seems to be that case of if you stop one line of the Limerick forwards, the other one will come come to the fore, and that's exactly what happened again in Crow Park. That's exactly what happened. In, like, a, a return of twelve points from your half forward line is 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 just simply incredible, and eleven of which came from play. Like it, it was a magnificent return. Like from from Morrissey and 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 um, Garrod Higgins, caused Galway all sorts of problems. All sorts of problems in the first half. They went in at halftime, having scored seven points from play between them. Like um, it, 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 it really was a head scratcher now for Shane O'Neill as to how he would come out in the second half and 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 and, and, and counteract it. But again, we're talking. Um, we spoke about the quality of Nicky um, Nicky Quaid spoke out. That 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 feeds into it. But like the old thing of this happened this season of his life. He's absolutely having a bomb storming, bomb storming season. Um, playing fantastic hurling and, and um, uh, pick, picking off fantastic scores and uh, of course we know I'm going into the final and I just don't want to play him going into the final but probably the strongest line on the water of a team is, is, is probably that half back line yeah. so um, uh, the big question for Waterford and for Liam Cahill um, will be 
can he contain the Limerick half forward line? Because that <coughs> that to me will probably be the battleground in in, in, in this year's final. But certainly it was a it was a class one performance, absolutely top class performance by the half forward line. Yeah, and we, we'll obviously look into the, the Waterford and Limerick clash more in detail next week, and we'll go through it briefly after this. But while the half forward line really stood up, and, and they're and they're seen in the scoreboard, you have to mention the half back line as well. Um, Declan Hannan was probably a bit quieter and um, went off late on. Paddy Lockton isn't the better placement to have, is he? But he scored he scored a brilliant point um, just before the half to put Limerick fifteen eleven ahead. And then you mentioned Darren Burns before us. I, I honestly can't remember Darren Burns putting a foot wrong this year. I think he's a shoo-in for an all-star at five, regardless of how the final goes. I just think he's been exceptional. And then at seven, Kyle Hayes has slotted in. I don't know why anyone would even doubt where Kyle could play at this stage. But his athleticism at seven was ridiculous on Sunday. So while the half-forward line are getting all the praise for putting up the scores, the half-back line were equally as important. They were, they were equally as important, Jack, and, and um, the, the, the standout performances of, 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 of um, Dermot Burns and, and, and Kyle Hayes, um, they overshadowed slightly um, the, 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 the performance of Declan Hannan. I, I honestly think Declan Hannan was immense uh, last Sunday, and I thought he was particularly immense when we needed him most. Um, uh, when we were trying to claw our way back into the game, I thought he showed great leadership, in, 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 in particularly in the first half. And again, until the time he went off, I, I, I think he, he was absolutely, absolutely crucial. It, it, it is a crucial line, and, and they, they, they were excellent last week. And um, certainly Kyle Hayes has, has, has netted into the, the half-back line. It, 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 it's like a dream. It's another one of those master strokes that, 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 that John Kyle pulls. And, and indeed converting Barry Dash into a, in, into a cornerback. And we, we, saw during, we, we saw during the early part of this year, we saw the transformation of Barry Nash from a def, an attacker to a defender. And we saw as a wing back that he was growing into the position game on game. There was measurable improvement. Did he did he get two men in the match awards at half back during the early part of the season? I have an idea he did. I have an idea he did. He was definitely no. in the match in the Munster League final, definitely man the match in that. Yeah. Now he's gone back into the corner and he's doing the very, very same thing. It 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 will tell you the, about, about the adapt adaptability adaptability of of of, um, of of Barry Nash. But we're forgetting all the time. When, when Limerick set out on this campaign, like we set out we set out without two thirds of our full battle. Like that was that 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 was a huge hole to fill, particularly in a sensitive area like like a full back line of all places. Like um, being without Mikey Casey being without Richie English. Like, <coughs> there had to be a certain amount of a leap of faith on the part of John Kyle and his management team to put in Dan Morrissey and Barry Nash back there. Now, Dan Morrissey has had a bit of experience playing at fullback, but not on a regular basis. But like, he's made the position his own. Dan Morrissey has, has, been a, a, has been immense back there. And Barry Nash, game on game on game. But you see, the, the, the situation, the ethos that has been created in this panel, the ethos that's been created in this squad, Jack, if you don't do it, there's somebody that will do it. You know, it's, it's, it's the strength of the bench. And, and John Kiley keeps emphasizing that. The group ethos, the, ben, uh, the, the, the panel, the squad, the squad. And like, you know, he has options there. If Barry Nash doesn't do it, which English would gladly do it. You know that's that's this this is where we're at. Like um, you know, we were talking for years, Jack, and I remember it longer than you for years. Getting fifteen up to the standard to play in, in these competitions and in the championship. Now we're looking at a situation where we're in a squad, and like there's nobody, but nobody in the squad that's irreplaceable. You know, well, like, even for the worst case scenario, worst case scenario to come to pass, 
in the final that we were without, without having the land. And hopefully, hopefully, we will not, because he's such a crucial player. You saw the impact that Peter Casey made when he came on in, 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 in um, the semi final against Galway. So, like, you, you look all over the pitch, there are obstacles. If you look at the midfield situation, William, I don't know whether we've, we've talked about it ad nauseum here in this, in this medium, has been having a smashing season. Darrow Dunneman has been a bit in hit and miss because of injury. But it, it, it's sad to see him back in the starting. But, you know, if any reason that things are not going well at midfield, you have the option of bringing Keen Lynch back there. And anyway, at centre forward, he's supplementing the midfield role all the time, anyway. So, like, you know, the, you have options all over the place. Plus, you know, he's been spoken about so much about. What do we have coming off the bench? And to, for the last three years, Jack, without exception, those that have come and out, have come off the bench, no matter what the occasion is, no matter what the competition is, they've made an impact. Yeah, it's, it's, cer it's certainly, it's definitely a squad effort. And, and you know, by the way, the players and managers reiterate it the whole time that they actually do mean it. And Peter Casey was exceptional off the bench. Two points in play, set up three or four. And he could have set up a goal had Aina Murphy not stopped David Reedy's brilliant save. And Aaron Glenn is rated 50-50 at the moment. Don Grady said that last night. We will know more next week. And we can discuss it more next week because if Aaron Glenn is ruled out, we kind of know that Peter Casey is going to come in. But that's, that's for next week. But you brought up an interesting point there saying no Limerick player is irreplaceable. And, and I, I agree with that. But there's one man that has been an ever-present for the last 10 years. And alongside Graham McCahey, of course. And you mentioned him earlier, is Nicky Quaid. And just how he's never got an All-Star is beyond me. But he's certain in his way to that this year. And he won't care for that singular accolade. He'll want the All-Ireland. But he's such an insurance back there. Oh, he's such a... Uh, but he's just incredible. And I, I, I've, I, I've said it a number, of, a number of times. And I mean it. And I've said it to Nicky himself. He's probably one of the best outfield players we've ever had. Because he, he's, a, he's an excellent outfield player. I'm like, oh, oh, what, what, what contribution he has made for, him. for that matter, what contribution the Quaid family ha, has, has, um, ha, has made to memory calling. We want about five or six podcasts to go near the yeah, yeah, county. But in his short life, the contribution that Nicky Quaid has made to memory with and, and and to the GAA. Like if you GAA look for role models, here is your perfect role model. Absolutely brilliant at what he does, brilliant shot stopper, brilliant puck out, br brilliant attitude, great team player. And, oh, you know, like I marvel at Nicky Quaid. I, I absolutely marvel at, at him. And I, I I've seen it firsthand. I have seen it firsthand. Um, in South Limerick, the contribution that Nicky Quaid has made to, and his two brothers and, and, and his mother and his late father, they have totally revitalized Devon. To totally, totally revitalized Devon. Here was a club up to 2011 had never won a, a, an adult county championship. Nicky Quaid was absolutely, and, 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 and Thomas. Jack, who was young at the time, um, what a contribution they have made to Effen. Effen went to the county junior championship. They go the following year, they win the county intermediate championship, and they go on. And not only that, but they had a rare monster club championship um, when they beat Paddy Duck behind the Newcastle West in a great, in, in, in great final. They go up and they play senior for four years. Like this, this is an area where there isn't even a village. Like, but it was the inspiration of people like Nicky Quaid. You go back to Effen and you, you, you see the wonderful facilities that they have back there in that pitch. Kickstarted by Nicky Quaid. You know, so, you know, I need to say no more, Jack. Yeah, I know. And, and I was just, I was just quizzing you there a while ago. There, we'll have a I, I just say, I, I just say, and if Nicky Quaid, and uh, as, as you rightly say, he probably wouldn't care about the accolade. If, if Nicky Quaid um, 
goes through his career without an all star, in my view, it's a crime. Yeah, we, we'll just, again, it's another thing we'll have to wait and see. With it. He certainly put his name right up there at the top of the list. And I, I put together a 15, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. No, I'd say probably more people disagree. But I, there was no hesitation to put Nicky Quaid in at number one. But just on the, the Quaid family and, and that legacy, um, I was quizzing you there before we started. There'll be a quiz coming uh, next week. Just the, the last five all Ireland starting teams Limerick have put out. And 2007 is the only one from the last five teams that we haven't had a Quaid and goals. It's, it's just incredible, really, the legacy that family has. And, and, and they just keep producing. Who, who's to say that the, the person that comes after Nicky won't be a Quaid? But it's just, it's just brilliant to see that kind of um, family tradition. And, and it's something that's in the GA more than any other sport, really, isn't it? It is, but you go back further. You go back further, Jack. You, you go back to 1955, when um, Clare um, shocked the hurling world when they beat Cork and Tipperary in, in, in the Munster Championship and were red hot favourites um, going into the Munster final until they ran up against Mackie, Mackie's Greyhounds on a day in which Dermot Kelly was a score 12 or 13 points. But don't forget on that team, but the Quaid twins, the brothers, Jack and Jim. Jack, who is the grandfather of, 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 of Nicky. You know, so like, it, 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 it's far more deep-rooted than 1980 when, when Tom was in goal. Like, you go back a long, long way and you find it. That, like, as I said, if, if you really want to discuss the, the contribution of the Quaids, it's, it, it's going to take more than a passing through comments and, and, and on one podcast. You, you need to dedicate a couple of podcasts to that, Jack. Well, that could be that could be a Christmas special that we look forward to uh, down the line. Um, I said earlier about Aaron Gillan, I said we'd wait till next week, but I suppose we'll know more next week and we can talk about it again. But if Aaron Gillan is to, to miss the final or isn't at 100%, is Peter Casey the obvious choice to come in or will they look to keep Peter Casey on the bench and have an impact sober? Will that roll go back to Flanagan or what do you think? John Kiley will go with without if we're without Kiley. I, I, I think Peter Casey is 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 um is the obvious, is the obvious. But um, John Kiley's propensity not to always do the obvious. <laughs> like it's he's very very hard to to second guess him. But that, that there's one thing that we can second guess. I can do to be right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one consistency that that, that we can't argue about. But um, yeah, I would, I, I, I would honestly think that Peter would be the obvious, and I, I suppose in many ways it, it, it reflects the, the, the strength of the Limerick team that you can send a team out in an All Ireland semi final and you can afford the luxury of naming Peter Casey among your subs because that is a luxury. Because uh, tell me a county team that Peter Casey wouldn't be an uh, in, on an automatic stack in 15. Um, what he brings, what he brings to the table, like you know, you know, he he he's totally consistent as well. Like if, I I've seen him at all levels, just as you have, Jack. You've seen him at colleges levels. You've seen you've seen him at the, at, at club level. You've seen him at inter county level. Very hard to pinpoint again when when Peter Casey didn't step up to the mark. Yeah, and and just just answer that question. There is there is no team out there, club county. Um, even you'd go as far as their provincial teams that Peter Casey isn't in the starting team and I suppose it goes back to that 2018 season when Peter Street reached the All-Ireland like Peter Casey starts um, Limerick's two games in John Kiley's first year in charge and if it wasn't for Peter Street getting to All-Ireland final in 2018 and Casey having a bit of an injury he would never have been on the bench and it's it's fortunate for Limerick that we have that luxury but you certainly wouldn't you wouldn't be worried about having Peter Casey starting in, in, instead of Aaron Gillan. But again, we, we'll know more on that, uh, on, on that next week. Um, it, 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 just, it just confirms, as I said, the bounty of riches that we have. But, um, like, we hope with all our being that, that, that Aaron Gillan, that Aaron Gillan is, is, is fit. <coughs> because he brings so well. We spoke about him last week and what he brings to the table. And again, again, I would say... I would say that I, have, I don't think during the course of games that he, he gets entirely the full uh, protection that, he, that he's that he's entitled to. Um, but he, he's, you know, the, the, the game the game last Sunday we saw two absolute giants of the game, Anglan and Joe Canning, 
leaving the game through injury, which which was a sad sight and it it it, 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 it tempered it a, a, a small bit and both um, had to be taken taken to hospital. <coughs> Thankfully, water went on the, on the road to recovery. But All Ireland final day needs Aaron Galan. It needs your it needs your top class player. It needs your marquee players. He's one of the marquee players. You know the the neutral supporter. Um, you know, it is the Aaron Galans, the Joe Cannings of this world have made this this game of ours a beautiful game. Yeah, and on a beautiful game, and on Joe Canning, Matt, the four sidelines in his in his time on the field. Like, have you ever seen it before? And and just before you get onto that, uh, you think Joe Canning goes off, and look, you you hate to see a player go off injured, but Galway then have a sideline two points down, and you think, well, at least Joe Canning is on the field. Fintan Burke up his steps and puts it over the bar, but just just on Joe Canning four points from sidelines, and I heard he did it in a game for IT in two thousand eight. But there's no one else that could do that. No one else. No, 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 no. And you must also look at the times in which which he did it, Jack. The first puck of the game, his first puck of the game, stepped up to stepped up to a line ball, um, in, in 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 the second minute, and 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 and, and split the uprights, and then. In the run into half time, he, he gets one of the toughy tough in it. And right at the death before half time, when Limerick look, going in at half time um, with a three point cushion, up steps Joe with another line ball and plants it to the post. And I, it, this, this, is, this is right of the raw stuff, this. You know, you, you could dream about it and you could talk about it and hallucinate about it even, but um, if you were in opposition to it, but. Um, like, geez, I, I, I honestly think that, the, 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 you know, it was simply incredible. Like, Joe Canning departed the scene, having scored, contributed 12 points, you know? And I, I, I actually had people during the week saying that he, he, he contributed very little to the game, other than, the, other than free pokes. He put over four line balls. He was flawless with freeze practically. I think he missed one. But Joe Canning, as we spoke last week, is now gone very much into the role of being the creator, helping to make things happen, bring other players in, 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 into the field and uh, into the play. And um, like the four line balls, they're, 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 it, it's one of, it could be one of the highlights of, of, of 2020 in, in, in this difficult year. Um, it certainly will be one of the highlights. And it must be something in the air in Galway. Because recently in, 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 in uh, uh, a senior Komogi game, and now this is another issue actually, Jack, um, in Komogi, a line ball is worth two points. And um, if I'm correct, when the, once the rule was brought in, but I'm subject to correction on this, but I'm pretty sure of it, that the first person to put a ball over the bar or two points from a line ball was our own Eva Sheehan from Limerick, from Granabell and Gary. Um, but um, as, as I was saying, it must be in the air around Galway Bay because Joe Canning put over four, but in a recent Camogie All Ireland Championship game between Galway and Cork, Rebecca Henley put over two, one from each side of, of, of the pitch. So I don't, and Dan Finton Buck putting it over. So. I don't know what it is about the Galway air, but it knows how to hit. Um, it helps them to hit line balls anyway. Yeah, definitely. And I was just thinking, watching the game, that like if if that was a Camogie game, Galway would have won by two points. That they would have an extra five points from sideline. So thankfully it wasn't. But it it's a beautiful skill, and it's it's great to see um, Joe being being at, at top form. And luckily, it didn't work against Limerick on the day. And we 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 were a couple of great exponents of. Our, Line ball as well. Yeah, well, I was just getting that now. Yeah, we have um, with Darrow Donovan, who is who is who's excellent at it, and uh, we have Jamie Butler that plays with Fiona, is is a master of the craft, and certainly we here in Lanru know about it when he when he hit one late equalizer and we subsequently lost the replay. Yeah, he, he's 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 exceptionally good at it as well, you know. Yeah, and I remember Ronan Lynch burst onto the scene for the Pearshig, and I think it was against Portumna in an All Ireland semi final. He was only sixteen or seventeen time, and he put one over. And 
And I've seen I've seen Aaron Galan do it from area at his e- at his ease. I've never seen him even attempted for uh, for Limerick. And Garrod Hegarty goes over a lot of them. He usually goes for a pass. But I'm sure if Limerick if Limerick win for more of them, they probably would score more. But they're definitely an efficient team, and it's probably not the most efficient way of scoring. But hats off to Joe Canyon anyway for hitting four and Fintan Burke then for following up. But uh, Joe Canyon was the center of a kind of a a moment that got a lot of air time, and I don't really think it should have got air time. We'll give it some now, but. That incident with Garrod Hegarty, I think it's in the first half, and Garrod is clearly going for a hook from behind, which is very, very common. Like, he was in a position, there was no way he was getting the block in front, goes for a hook, connects with Joe Canning, back, lower back, um, Canning goes down. And there's nothing done on the field, and I, I, think it's, I think it was the right call. If a yellow was given, I can see where it was coming from. But the air time it got, Matt, as if Garrod went out to kill him. I mean, he has a hurley. If he wanted to hurt him, he could have really hurt him. Jack, um, I'm absolutely delighted that, that Limerick beat Galway. Absolutely thrilled with the victory. I'm absolutely disgusted with this debate that's going on about Garrod Hegarty and 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 Joe Canning. I watched it and watched it and watched it, and it's a lot worse happens in every game a hundred times. Like there was absolutely no intent whatsoever, in my view, on the part of Garod Hegarty to in any way, um, you know, do anything to Joe Canning. None whatsoever. And this thing of, of, of Sean Joe Canning's back, um, uh, the, the, the mark of the holiday, by the way, and all this, this sort of thing. Like Garod Hegarty, it, what, what Garod Hegarty did and it, certainly there was no intent of, of, or no deliberate, anything deliberate on the part of Garod, Garod Hegarty. It happens hundreds of times in every game, but we, we, we don't see it. But um, I, um, the, the whole discussion about it, in my opinion, is nonsense. And I, I, I think we shouldn't be even discussing it. We should move on. Yeah, no, we, we will move on. And, and it's, it's a physical game. And look, you know, you know Garrod Hegarty isn't a dirty player. He's not going out to do that just to. I just, wanted to just wanted to clarify that. But while while we're on Garrod Hegarty, and I suppose we'll we'll look. That's that's the game. We have the game next weekend to look forward to, and we we'll look forward to it in more detail next weekend. But just heading into the the last hurling game of the year, and we'll probably look at kind of the all, who's in the All Star um, contenders. But on on the topic, Garrod Hegarty, he's right up there for hurler of the year. I think he's the bookie's favorite. I haven't seen, but he's he's been so good in every game. He's He's 13 points from play in four games for a half hour. He's ridiculous going. He's just been sensational. Yeah, he's been sensational, and you, 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 you just, you just can't argue. You just can't argue with his, with, with his type of performances, and, and um, this, this, this thing to try and throw a span on the works about what went on last Sunday. You know, it makes me very angry. I have to, I have to say. Um, you, you, you're looking at a player on, on the top of his game. You're looking at a sportsman, and and uh, Gerard Hegarty is 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 that to his fingertips. He, he he's a sportsman, and um, he, he, there was no way that Gerard Hegarty was going to be involved in anything on four like that. So I, it's it's um, like you're right. Thirteen points in four games can't argue with it. And a fantastic recovery from a um, half forward. The steps up to Brock Park. In intro half last week, scores scores four points from play in an All Ireland semi final. Man is at the top of his game, and we should let him continue. Yeah, and, and we will, we will let him continue. And I, and I suppose going through the Limerick team is kind of hard to, to fault um, any performance really. But when I I put it together, as I said, an All Star team, and the certainties that I had in the team were Nick Quaid, Sean Finn, Dermot Burns, Keen Lynch, Garrod Hegarty, and Aaron Galan. But realistically, you could make a case for any Limerick player this year to get into an All-Star team. You could. Absolutely. You could make a case for all. And like if, if, if we see a series of nominations, I wouldn't be surprised if we get 14 or 15 nominations. And the, and the, way, and the way John Kelly is selecting his team, you could have even 16 or 17, because how could you leave yeah. out uh, Seamus Fanningham or Peter Casey, who both really haven't started all the games? Um, I suppose as well, two, two Waterford players, even three, I suppose. Um, and we'll, we'll move on to Waterford now, who had an excellent win over Kilkenny on Saturday. And I suppose, we, I suppose we, before we get into individual players, that 227 to 223 win over Kilkenny, 
Um, I certainly didn't call it. I don't think you called it either, but it was just <laughs> not even the victory, but the manner of victory. They were down by nine at one stage in the first half. They were down by seven at half time, and they blew Kilkenny out of the water. And I saw, I, saw, I saw a statistic. I think they scored, was it once or two seventeen in the second half? And the year, and the year Kilkenny beat them in the 08 final, and, and it was probably put down as the greatest performance ever by a hurling team. Kilkenny scored two sixteen, so they actually outscored that 2008 team in, in the in the second half, which is an incredible statistic. And, and and they certainly are a dangerous, dangerous team. They're a dangerous team, and I suppose if you if you if you take the two semi finals. It's just been the barometer going into the final of, of where the teams are at and, and, and in terms of form and what have you. Um, Waterwood would have to start the All Ireland as favourites. You know, and we, we can't we, we can get away from that if you're, if you're talking about the, the semi finals alone. And um, like, I, I suppose the signs were there in the first half um, that Waterwood weren't as far adrift with Kilkenny as the scoreboard showed at half time of seven points. Um, they had a few bad, um, they had a few bad misses in that first half. Could have been a bit, could have been a bit closer. Um, maybe suffering a small bit of club park stage fright or stage um, club park nerves. And um, but in the, in the second half, that, 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 that performance was absolutely immense. It was one for the ages. Um, you would question whether it's possible to repeat that performance again. But you would also question the quality of the performance of Kilkenny in the second half, um, which I, I thought Kilkenny were put on out of it in, in, in the middle third um, in, in, in that second half. And it's, it's very, very seldom that we, we talk in terms of Kilkenny being blown out of it anywhere, but it certainly happened. happened. Um, they, 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 they very effectively cut off the supply to, to TJ Reid, who was. Who was um, who was very threatening and menacing in, 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 in the first half. But overall, it was a fantastic a fantastic team performance by Waterman. Um, done with pace, done, done with skill. Yes, there would be huge, huge opposition in, in, in the final. And had Kilkenny got to the final, we would have gone into the we would have gone into that final with a score to set you from the semi-final last year. Now we have a role in reversal. We have Waterford going into the final um, uh, with a score to settle with Limerick from the Munster final. And um, you, you were probably there, Jack, but immediately after the Munster final, when Liam Cahill came up for the interview, he, he emphatically said and meant it, uh, we came here today to win the Munster final. And um, it, I, I could glean, by the way, he said it, it wasn't, it, was, it wasn't Bravo talk. Um, he meant it. And, and visibly, visibly disappointed that they didn't. So, like that, um, like we said it last week, the town has a Midas touch. There's, there's no doubt about it. We, we saw what he has done with Tipperary. And um, with, with under 21 in 2018, they went down to Cork and um, in the Munster final, and they were literally annihilated in, in, in the Munster final. And of course, the, the back door was there. 21 that year, and he regrouped his forces, he got away in the semi final, and then it went on and beat Cork in the final. This, 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 this is the caliber of organization um, that, uh, that has come to the water of the table with the appointment of, 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 of Liam Cahan. Yeah, water of the very, very impressive against Kitchen. In my view, possibly um, uh, nearly deserved the tag of favorites. Um, go, going into the All Ireland final, if we base our performances on on the semi finals alone, but of course they're not based on that, and um, it, 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 it will certainly provide very, very, very formidable opposition. Yeah, and it's 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 hard to get, to gauge who who will be favourites and who should be favourites, and realistically, I don't think either team will mind. But they're definitely the two most consistent teams that have got to the final. Um, and you spoke about Liam Cahill there, and and there was a point. I think Waterford were still down at this stage, and there was a ruck over by the sideline, and, and Waterford came away with a free or a sideline. And I, it's kind of hard to remember because Liam Cahill and Mikey Beaven sponsored the field, and, and they're giving it everything. And a lot of time you kind of see this bravado from managers, and it's not re- replicated. But the Waterford players came alive even more so afterwards. So they're certainly playing for their manager, and they are leaving everything out in the field. Yeah, you see, you see about Waterford. 
Devotion and motherhood are one of the genes that the Pharisaic moment is the nucleus of the team that failed so dismally um, over the last two years. And you, you ask yourself, what is the change? And like the main change has been the appointment of Cal. There, there seems to be no doubt about that. But in the background, Jack, of this war of a team, and I know we'll be talking about it again next week, they, like Limerick, have a team of players who have won up and on through the ranks. They won the All Ireland, despite Limerick beat them in the 2013 months of final and through the deeper. One of them went down to win the All Ireland that year. They won the All Ireland under 21 in 2016. So it isn't as if um, the water are coming in with people, with players that don't know how to win big games and how to play in big games, how to play in All Ireland semi finals and finals. They have players like Limerick as well. Maybe not as many, because Limerick won a couple of under minor championships and won a couple of under 21 championships. And um, would, would certainly, um, <laughs> just ask yourself was it a question of just getting the organization right? All right, um, Ty de Burka was out, and we, we, we now know the huge loss that he was. Austin Gleason and Jamie Bannon, for some reason, seem to have lost, um, have lost their best form, had lost their best form. They're now back at their very best. And um, as, as you said there at the outset, it, it, they're, they're, they're just probably playing for, playing for the manager and please back home team. Yeah, and, and just while you mentioned that uh, 2013, obviously the minor final winter play, replay in 2014 was the same. And, and I don't know, have you, have you any research done? And I don't, certainly on topic, but I remember I was around that go at the time I was around the minor myself. And the players that have come through from both sides is, is incredible from that team. From, from Waterford, you have the likes of the Bennets that were there. Austin Gleason was absolutely colossal as a minor. I don't think I've ever seen a player as good as he was at minor level. And um, there's obviously a few more that I'm missing. And Patrick, then, Patrick was another one of them. Yeah, um, and you, Tom Devine, who will be here now only that, I think he's a, he's a bra, but regardless, the Limerick team then, you 90% of the Limerick team have come through, the likes of Sean Finn, Keane Lynch, all these boys, Barry Nash, like, it's madness that uh, Ky Kyle. Kyle was too young, incredibly. He was, he was Tom Morrissey, another one, like, you could go through the list of names, but it's mad how the, the, the turnover from them minor teams, and they played out two two epic Munster finals and two epic replays as well. It, it's crazy the turnover only five, six years later that they're going to be meeting in the Northern final. And, and those players have an awful lot of history uh, coming into this game. They have an awful lot. They have an awful lot of history. And, and um, um, you, you'll probably have to say the Waterford have an awful lot of pink or hot at the site of the green jersey. Um, uh, like they, it, it seems to have affected them and affected them recently because um, in recent years, because if we just go back to 2019, um, when Waterford went to Port Park with high hopes of winning the National League, on it, on it we unceremoniously thumbed over by Limerick. And then, uh, of course, we saw the, the backing, I suppose, is the only one we could have been able to describe in, in Walsh Park last year and indeed in the Gary Grounds the year before. So, Limerick's recent history um, is, 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 is very, very good against Waterford. But that, on the other side, will create a certain amount of pent up hot in Waterford. Um, that, that, that they will want to avenge all that and what better day to do it than our, than our island final day was um, probably easier said than done, Jack. Yeah, and, it's, and obviously, look, we will look forward to that game in huge detail uh, next mm -hmm. weekend. But one thing I want to just touch on before we go into, by the time we're on this next, will be next Friday, a lot of the build up will have happened. I remember, I'll never forget Shane Dowling in the wake of that Cork win. And I don't know how he had the composure, which was, it was such an incredible win. But in the semi final in 2018, he kind of spoke to the Limerick people. And he was just saying to kind of keep cool, essentially, to Limerick public, don't be, don't be hyping the players too much and all that kind of jazz. It's a completely different scenario now. It will be no, no surprise if, any, if these Limerick players meet no one in the two weeks leading up to the game. It's just such a different, different circumstance that we have in 2020 as compared to the last time in the All Ireland final. Oh yeah, sure. And and uh, De 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 Hannan was saying it yesterday. You, you know, they're, they're, they're basically because of of the, the COVID restrictions and the guidelines, um, they're basically locked down in that um, most of them are working from home. 
Um, there's no interaction with work colleagues. There is no going to and from work. So the opportunities for meeting people are, 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 are few and far between. And you just wonder, is, is it a good or a bad thing? Um, possibly, I suppose, it's a good thing, maybe. Um, let's hope to be a good thing. Um, that Limerick um, will have experienced it now from both sides. Um, they will have experienced all the interaction and the hype in, in, in 2018 and a much more calm and much more subdued um, approach to this final. Um, I, I, I think this is probably for the better uh, in, that the, in that the players can go away and, and probably focus on, 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 on their game. And um, uh, I suppose the downside of it is um, if, if they're away working alone, less interaction, um, they're probably thinking too deeply or too much about the game um, that might, might affect them. But I suppose overall, uh, as you concentrate for a final in a truncated year like this, and like it's a crash course of championship holding, let's face it, it's all over in six weeks. Um, it, it might be a bad thing. Let's hope it isn't. Yeah, and, and I would I would agree that it probably isn't a bad thing, but for for a county like Waterford, it would definitely play into their favour. I think I remember I read um Dan Shannon's book came out probably a decade ago at this stage, and more recently Dave Fitzgerald's, and he said when they, when Waterford reached the final in 08, it was just hysteria in the county. And, and look, we love Hurland and Limerick, but Waterford are equally passionate about Hurland and definitely playing to their favour that they won't have to deal with that. Limerick will be accustomed to being not Ireland final, whereas Waterford aren't. But it's just another game in 2020, realistically, heading into it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, that, 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 that's exactly it. And I suppose we've got well accustomed now to the protocols and, and the build up to big games. Like, um, it isn't as if, as if um, Limerick aren't accustomed to big games. Like, you must remember that the first round game against Clare doubled up with being a league final. So, you the league final, you're the Munster final, you're the All Ireland semi final, and, and now you have an All Ireland final. There's, there's no games come much bigger than that, Jack. Um, you know, the, even the, the second round game against the Prairie was against the All Ireland champions. So, like, um, they, they would be well accustomed to it at this stage, you would imagine. Yeah, and again, that's something that we will touch on next week. But look, we're, we're glad to be in All Ireland final, and I suppose, Matt, in. On March 12th, whatever date was that, the date Leo Radcar made that announcement, uh, you would have wished, firstly, for the GH you played. Secondly, you would have wished for the club and county both to go ahead. And then you would have probably been wishing for a Limerick in an All-Ireland final. That's something that we have and something that we'll definitely look forward to next again. Absolutely. Ab ab absolutely. It has been a year like no other. And like, on that point, like, I would be seriously concerned um, going into this 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 particular month um, with the lifting of the restrictions, like we've we've come a long way, and um, we're within touching distance of a vaccine. And if we can appeal to this medium to people not to alter their behaviour, let's crush this bloody virus. Let's get this pandemic. Let's get it out of our country once and for all. Like there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is nothing more soul destroying. I walked down. Um, to Croke Park last Sunday, down past the, the, the Croke Park Hotel, uh, you know, is a hive of activity on, on beat match day. You could walk across the street, um, no cars or anything. The place was deserted. Going to Croke Park, rows and rows and rows of empty seats. The Cusick stand at the far side, not a soul to be seen on it. It's in all our hands, Jack, to change that. It's in all our hands to change it. If we want to get back to living the way that we were used to, and if we want to get back quickly, it's in all our hands, particularly over the, the festive season, particularly over the next four weeks when the, when the, when the restrictions um, are now being lifted, the, the, the second are being lifted from, from this very day. So, like it's within all our gift, um, if, if if we want to alter that situation, like I, I people have been saying to me, you're one of the lucky ones, um, to to be able to get access to these games. I I, I don't consider a, 
I, I consider lucky to be able to see the hurling games flesh in the flesh, but I certainly don't consider myself lucky um, with the with the loss of the sense of occasion that these games bring. Yeah, and 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 that's certainly certainly a huge loss enough to have the the crowds and and as you said, it's in our hands to to look after it and to make sure we can crush crush it once and for all. But hopefully an All-Ireland, a festive All-Ireland win with the Christmas tree up could go a long way in sorting that and keeping us at home. Um, look, we, we'll be back next week to look forward to what will be an All-Ireland final like no other at a time that we'll probably never have an All-Ireland final. Uh, we'll be able to watch that Ireland final with our Christmas trees before that. We'll be back with a preview. Uh, thanks again, Matt, for looking back on the Galway game and looking ahead to next week's game. And we'll be in touch soon. Thank you, Jack.